Hello, good afternoon. My name is Philip Nemery, and today I will show you how SAP Predictive Analytics can help you in time-based forecast. Did you know that 68% of organizations using advanced analytics realized a competitive advantage? 68%? Well, how come? Well, by applying predictive analytics in areas such as financial planning, customer analysis, sales and marketing, distribution, you can create a competitive advantage. But how? Well, concretely speaking, in sales and marketing, by looking at your churn, by predicting who's likely to churn, who's likely to become a good customer, who's likely to buy a new product. Well, all those questions can be addressed by predictive analytics. Predictive analytics can help you in predictive maintenance, in detecting fraudulent actions, fraudulent payments. But predictive analytics can, as we will see today, help you in forecasting your cash flow of the future. So in all these areas, predictive analytics can be helped. And today we will focus on finance plan. But why would you do that? Why would you model the demand and try to forecast it? Well, with demand modeling and forecasting, you're going to be able to increase your revenue from reduced stock costs with forecast per store. You're going to be able to optimize your inventory planning by making real-time reporting at a granular level. You'll be able to improve your tactical decisions regarding your inventory levels based on the demand forecast. So once you know what's going to be the demands, you can go back to the production chain and define exactly what needs to produce. What are the steps to build a time-based forecasting model. The first step is to define the real business problem. Once that's defined, you need to look to the data and bring the data together to see if it matches the business problem. Okay. Third is to prepare the data. And we will see how this can be automated in the demo. Once that's done, you can build a model. And once the model is built, you can evaluate and refine your model. Finally, once you have a good model, it's all about deploying it and maintaining your model. But let's put these six, step, six steps into reality. And let's go over to the demo part. So I will build, <clears throat> so here we are in SAP Predictive Analytics the model part, which is part of the automated analytics in the opposite of the expert analytics where you need data scientist skills in order to use it. The model in the automated analytics can be used by any business data analyst. You can build very easily regression models, classification models, but now, for now, we will focus on the time series analysis. And the first thing to define is to define the data. So in this example, in this demo, I will work with text files, but you can connect to a database, any kind of database, SAS files, SPSS files, or even Excel files. So once I've defined the flat files that I want to work with, I can, I should specify the type of data that I'm working with. Indeed, the software can recognize it by itself, but I've decided to open a previous analysis. So what we want to do is as follows. As you can see here in the last column, I have a cash, cash values. Those cash values, they have been recorded on a specific day. So I want actually to, based on this value and the timestamp, predict what will be this value in the coming days. I could do it with those values, but because I want to feed and to give a bit more insight of the, my business, into the model, I have created new features. So I have, for instance, set and said that this specific day, is it the last Monday of the month? Is it a Tuesday? Is it the last Monday of the quarter? Numbers of working days in this instance. So as you understand, based on one day on a timestamp, I'm able to create a lot of features, a lot of attributes. And that's what I've created, what you can see here. Okay, now that I have my data set, I can create a model. But 
This is the most difficult place. Difficult, I'm kidding. It's just, as a business analyst, you have to define what is the time, so which feature amongst the variables is the time. And as you can recognize, the software recognizes it directly for yourself. The second thing is to define what is the target, what is what you want to focus. And the last thing is, what are the variables that will help you to make a good model? For the first round, we will exclude all the variables that I have created, remember? So let's build a model just based on two values cash value and a timestamp. As you can see, I have an error rate of 24%, which is quite high. So let's have a look at the forecast model. Well, you can see the green light are the actual values, the real values, while the blue light, the blue lines, sorry, are the forecast values. So you can see at the end that the window, the minimum value and the maximum predicted value is quite high. So therefore, Let's go back a step and include the features that I've previously excluded. So now I will add these features, the features so that they're telling, is it the last business day of the month? Is it the last Tuesday of the month, the last quarter of the month? And let's see if it has an impact on the quality of the model that I will generate. Taking a bit more time because much more data. Oh, here it is. And as we can see, there are only 13% error, so we reduce the error by 11%. Let's have a look how it impacts my forecasted model. But you can see here that now there is a definite clear trend, the red line. You can see that the blue line and the green line are very close, and that the predicted interval in the future is much more. In other words, my forecast is much better by adding much more data. But not any data is interesting for a model. Well, thing is that the model, the software, will automatically define which feature is interesting or not for your forecast model. You can then also have a look at what are the contributions per variable. What is actually explanatory for your time forecast? But what is also very important is, okay, I've got a nice graph make, with some forecast, but can I do something with my model? And that's exactly where predictive analytics is all about. You can save your model, and you can save directly your model either in a time file, or in a text file, or in a database. Why would you do that? Well, that's the way to export your model and to put it in production. So what is really important is that now, just by some simple clicks, I'm able to generate either a text file or a SAS file or a special SQL file which will deploy my model in a database. Based on that, I just can incorporate my predictions into my production environment. And together we have seen that building a model with ECP takes much, much less time than with without ECP. If you have any questions, if you just go to one of these links, or you can contact me directly to these addresses. Thank you very much for your attention. Bye for now.